Oh, I'm in. I'm anchored. The boat's pretty much put away. I just have to hang the queue flag. I'm gonna have a little swim. It's funny, it... <laughs> All the other boats are rolling so much, but mine's not moving at all. And that's probably because I'm just so used to the insane motion of being at sea that I don't even notice. Because I'm like, why is my boat flat? It's probably not. Um, anyway, this is Vanuatu. This is my skin sacrifice for hand starting the engine. I'd rather lose some skin than my boat. That is all I can say. Boat's pretty much back to normal. I feel so loopy right now. I feel like I could just fall over and pass out. So I'm gonna make coffee. Uh, as you guys know, I don't drink coffee on passage. I usually drink a lot of green tea instead. Um, and then the first cup of coffee when I get in is always insane. Um, the reason I don't drink coffee is because I like to be able to nap whenever the opportunity arises and coffee kind of sets me up for being awake the whole day and at sea I like to stay in this state of perpetual sleeping and awakening and it's always such a treat to have that first cup. Although I can't remember where I stowed the coffee pot. <laughs> so that's a problem. <laughs> So because I'm trying to clear in on the weekend, it's an extra fee and apparently you need to pay in cash right away, which I figured usually they clear you in and they give you a bill and you have time to pay it. I've just gone through my whole boat and <laughs> stockpiled all of my money that are in currencies I think they will take. So this is what I have so far. I have $10 Canadian. I have 45 Australian. 16 New Zealand, 15 Fijian, and 31 US. This is, oh no, you know what? I have $15.05 Fijian. So uh, that's all that I've been able to find so far. I have a ton of uh, Indonesian rupees, which I'm pretty sure they won't take, but it'd be cool if they did. Um, and potatoes, <laughs> the age old currency. I think it's gonna work out though. Um, could take all day for customs to get here, but I wish I could know because then I would just sleep. Maybe I will anyway. I'm really tired. I've been up since three and uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, while I'm waiting for customs, I'm going to try to fix the gimbal on my stove. So all I need to do is get the stove out, um, tap it and then put it back in and it would be really nice if it was fixed. I Cool. I only had to look through every single tool locker on my boat to find it, but I found it. <laughs> Gimbal is fixed. Now, nap time. So today's Monday. Um, I arrived on Saturday. I've been here two days. Today I'm going into town. Uh, so there's nothing here but little dirt paths and straw hut villages. And the road into town is this really long, bumpy, like a two track road through the grass. Um, there's trucks that go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It takes two hours. You're probably going about the speed that a person could run, which is why it takes so long. Um, so I'm gonna row into shore in a little bit here, just making my coffee, and gonna go on that adventure. I'm gonna get a SIM card for my phone so I can have contact with the outside world. All I've done since I've been here is um, go surfing, go for walks on the beach, walk through the village. It's actually been kind of nice to not be connected for a bit because um, it just gives me the feel of the place, but I'm also very excited to call my mom. Hi, mom. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Clearing into customs was a really mellow experience. I rode ashore and went up to a little hut on the hill where the customs guy had me sit down at a picnic table and fill in some forms. Immigration, I didn't end up clearing for another four days because as you'll see, the road between that little town in Tana and the main town is very treacherous and takes about two hours of off-roading to get anywhere. So the immigration guy only liked to come about once a week and do clearance en masse. However, they didn't care if I went ashore anyway and just lived my life. Biosecurity, I wasn't able to clear until I got to Porta Villa for another probably two weeks. Um, but for the most part, they're really mellow. I filled out most of the forms online before I left, double-checked with everyone that everything was okay, and they really didn't care, so it was probably the most chill, clear-in process that I've ever done. And they did accept all of my weird currency. It all managed to add up to be the right amount. I rode ashore and pulled my dinghy up on the beach where the local fishermen hung their nets and the kids played in the water catching small fish. 
From the beach, there's a small dirt path to walk up to that leads to the area where a few people live, and there's a yacht club that, well, it used to be a yacht club. The last cyclone sort of took it out, and they don't have enough money or supplies to fix it. You can still see the flags and burgees hanging on the yacht club from all the boats that have come before when it still had a roof and walls. This table here is where I sat down to clear customs, and hopefully as more cruisers come in and give more money and building supplies, they can get this back up and running. Nope. <laughs> Olivia, are you trying to steal the baby? Yes, I, want, I want her, but she doesn't want me. I went to one village and the, the babies were crying to see us. Oh, that's so cute. they'd never seen a white person. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> island lady. Early morning time, time when food is up, yeah. Bless you now and be nice, the sweet morning Another exciting part about finally getting to Vanuatu is seeing Dan again, so you guys will remember him as my road trip mountain bike buddy from New Zealand. He's the chef on an Oyster 62, and 
they left New Zealand about a month before I did to cruise New Caledonia before they came on up to Vanuatu while I was waiting for my sail and waiting for a weather window that fit my boat a little better. He took four days off from work when he first arrived so that we could hang out and catch up. So Dan has only been on my boat for just over 12 hours and he's already made a delicious loaf of bread. <laughs> so we're getting a bag ready to go try surfing at this beach. So we're gonna bring the bread as part of our picnic. And we have a thermos of coffee and some cups and other picnic supplies in here. Hello! What is your name? My name is Holly. What is your name? I like your fish. Nice fish. <laughs> Port Resolution in Tana is the southernmost port of entry in Vanuatu. You need special permission to come in here, but it's not that hard to get. All you need to do is just email them and tell them you want to come. And as far as I know, they don't withhold permission from anyone. There wasn't any good surf to be had on our little expedition, but we did have a nice beach day and a nice picnic. We returned to my boat a bit early to make some dinner with the fresh vegetables that I bought at the market on my trip into town, and to prepare for what the very exciting thing to do in Tana is, which is the trip up to the active volcano. There happened to be quite a large group of sailors who wanted to see the volcano, so we ended up getting a ride in the back of the customs and immigration truck to the base of the volcano. Many jokes were made about being deported and withheld. Yeah, it's true. We got to sort of a touristy place where we were mixed in with a bunch of land tourists and proceeded to drive up to the volcano in another truck just as the sun was setting. It made for quite the stunning backdrop. <laughs> the line of humans <laughs> ascends to the sacrificial <laughs> altar. <laughs> one by one, yeah. <laughs> they are pushed into the It kind of looks that way. At first, all we could see was a bunch of smoke coming out of the volcano, but as we got closer to the crater's edge, we began to see and hear what was lurking inside. That's sick. Yeah. Hi. Oh, oh my god. Holy shit. That's wild. So sick. Wow, I guess you have time to run away from those, they fall pretty slowly. <laughs> <laughs> My first thought too. It felt like the volcano was actually breathing, and it was really easy to see why people used to worship the spirits that lived inside of them, because it definitely had a magical life of its own. Maybe it's work. Three, two, two, one, boom. No, it still didn't work. Maybe it's Maybe work. he rejects all social norms. One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> 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 
Maybe it doesn't speak English. <gasps> Did you say you think I'm done? <laughs> <laughs> Potatoes, you Feed said. Me more people. Yeah. You're grabbing it through anywhere, you know. Exactly. You I, that's what I do the same. I just always go. The drive back down the volcano was in the night, and this road was just as rutted out and uncomfortable as the one back from town. It's the sort of road where you have to hold on to something above your head preferably, and sort of tense your entire body so you don't get thrown from the truck. Not being able to see where we were going made it even more exciting. Today I'm going with some friends, um, James and some crew from Uhuru, as well as Luca and Neto from Katouche, and the locals are giving us a little tour of the natural hot springs and the different types of mud in the area. So uh, we are each bringing something to trade, some people are bringing food, I have a bunch of clothes that I've been looking to give out in the islands. You know, we already visited the volcano, but obviously around a volcano there's a lot of geothermal activity, and this is one of the spots where that happens. Before I left Opua, the guys at Cater Marine gave me a whole shirt full of polo, a whole shirt, a whole bag full of polo shirts with the Cater Marine logo on them. Super nice uh, sun fabric. So I'm bringing two of those, um, one of my long sleeve shirts because I want something for the women, and then some pencils for the kids. I rode across the bay to get to this gorgeous black sand beach. Katouche took their dinghy with the engine, and James was paddled in by two kids in an outrigger canoe. That's like a dream. I'm like, I've always wanted to be in a deck canoe like that. Yeah, same. This is so weird. The way they laugh together. I literally, like, forever, that's been a dream of mine. I've always wondered seeing these things. That is so cool. Can I see your slingshot? Did you make it yourself? Can you, uh, what do you do with the slingshot? Do you hunt? Yeah. What do you hunt for? Beak. Yeah? Every time you touch. That's so cool. Oh, wow. Can you feel it? Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can smell it too. Steaming. Incredibly hot. That's so cool. Yeah, it's oh. even hot here. <laughs> okay, look at Oh? Yeah. This is Sheila, our tour guide and the lady who took us into the jungle to see some of the hidden wonders that were tucked away behind rocks and up mountains. Oh, very hot, very hot. You could, you... James is going <laughs> to try the chili. You going to try? <laughs> no, no, it's hot, no? It's okay. But it's not ripe. Does it turn red yeah. when it's yeah. ripe? When it's red, oh. it's red. Oh, that's <laughs> very hot! <laughs> that was very hot! <laughs> very hot. <laughs> oh, that's really hot. One. <laughs> the cyclone that destroyed the path, when did that happen? I think it's... Yes, this, this year, but I didn't... Was it was it very bad? Oh no, it's very bad. It was very bad. Yeah. Where were you? Were you in your house? I told you the big house, a feminine house, the big one. The big one, yeah. All my all of my family inside the feminine house. It was scary. Yeah, because you have the couple like this. The ceiling lifting. Yeah. Wow. And your house, was it damaged? Yes. My house is damaged. Everything gone. Everything? Yeah. The second one was stronger than the first. Okay. I think they're going to need it. The kids, they go. The, this one is like... Kids, they say, small volcano. 
Sometimes it's spoiling. Oh, what? Spoiling up. Overflows and go. What? Water coming out? Yeah. Can we go down or no? No, it's not. Oh. Yeah, it's good. It's usually yeah. that it happens here. No. Uh, okay. Usually it's like this. Is there sometimes more steam or no? It's always this, pretty much this average. Sometimes when it's uh, cloudy, no more steam. Oh yeah. Next we hiked up to a small hill where Sheila's ancestors used to take the colorful mud and paint themselves for ceremonies. That's the clay. This was used before, in the old days? Our grand-grandmother used to come here. A long time they didn't have paint for painting their face. Go to go to custom ceremony, we come here and tick. They tick, see, tick they tick like this. They find the color, then they get with them to the custom ceremony and they paint their face. They out for custom ceremony. I wonder how they found it. What colors do you have? <laughs> Gray. <laughs> Oh, dark red. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, look at that one. It's purple. Put it on your arm. Well, kind of purple. Purpley brown. Ah, oh, there's purple. Oh, that's rich. There we go. Orange. Wow. No, this is amazing. <laughs> cool. Okay, paint face. Pick up. And white. That must be your spirit your color. Sweat in your meat, yeah. <laughs> when you don't shower, this is what happens. <laughs> Simba. <laughs> Amazing colors. Wait. Be for virgin. <laughs> <laughs> I need a haircut. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. ah. mm -hmm. It just got like a multitude of colors in it. Oh, that one's really warm. It's made for this. Oops. Yeah, it really is. It's like perfect. Look, Jane is with the hair from the background. Sorry. That's pretty cool. I'm like a cat. Yeah, I was missing something here. On our way back down to the beach, the tide was filling in, and as the cool ocean water mixed in with the boiling hot water of the beach, the kids from the nearby village sat in the warm tide pools that it created and bathed themselves. Many of the locals in Vanuatu have this stunning natural blonde hair, which just looks so cool on them. This is cool? Yes. When the little boys found out that Neto and Lucas are from Brazil, they started talking to them obsessively about soccer, a national obsession of Vanuatu. <laughs> Neto and Lucas remembered that they had a spare soccer ball on board, so they offered to go out to their boat to get it. When the kids found out that they were doing a there and back, they all requested to take a ride in the Zodiac, something that they probably don't ever really get to do. I think the ride in the boat was just as fun <laughs> as getting the soccer ball itself because more and more kids came running down the beach to pile in. When they came back from shore, there were smiling faces all around. Try to see if it's good. And the pump. Excellent. Yes. 
Thanks for watching this week's video. I put out new videos every two weeks on Monday in YouTube, and for my patrons, you guys get a little snack on the weeks that I don't put out full-length YouTube episode. These snacks are really fun. Um, I take requests from things that you want to see that I don't necessarily show on my boat, or any specific questions about pieces of gear that I may have. If you'd like to become a patron, my Patreon is patreon.com slash windhippie. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who support me and make this trip possible. For one-time donations, I have a PayPal, paypal.me slash windhippie. I also have merchandise. All of this is in the links below in the description uh, if you want windhippie t-shirts, hats, etc. Uh, thank you for all of your lovely comments. I like to read them before I do another edit because it just puts me in this really happy mood and I think about all the nice things you guys have to say and it just makes me excited to edit and share with you. Right now, I'm in the Solomon Islands and it's so hot. It's rainy so all the hatches are closed and I'm just kind of dying. <laughs> um so yeah thank you for your comments that was a tangent thank you tish for reminding me when i need to do more edits um she sort of helps keep me on track and um i upload these to dropbox and then she puts them from there on to youtube uh, i do all the editing myself on my boat and she's just like my manager <laughs> telling me when i need to do things and such is stuff yes okay heat stroke uh, I think that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys next week with the next Vanuatu Island. Uh, thanks for watching.